Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited to share with you a few Tiziana Terenzi fragrances and I'm so pumped for this because I have been wanting to experience Tiziana Terenzi for a really long time and I want to say a huge thank you so much to a company called So Avant Garde for, for partnering with me in today's video. So So Avant Garde was kind enough to send me a few of these fragrances to review for you guys and if you're interested in getting anything from their website they also did give me a discount code for you so you can save 15% on any order using my code Marie15 and on their website you can get lots of high-end luxury niche fragrances such as Tiziana Terenzi, Parfum de Marly, Nishan A, and of course a whole bunch of other really amazing high-end luxury niche fragrances. And some of these perfumes can be very pricey so I think anytime you can save 15 or 20 percent I think that is amazing and I would definitely encourage you to head on down and use my discount code if you're interested in anything. I would absolutely love that. And if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about perfume so if that is your thing please make sure to head on down and subscribe and if you haven't also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram where I share a lot of outfits of the day, home decor, minimalism, decluttering and of course a ton of perfume related content and without further ado let's get started in today's video. Okay guys so let's start out actually with my favorite from all of the Tiziana Trenzi fragrances that I have sitting here in front of me and this is Linche and I believe it's pronounced Linche. I have looked it up. I do think that it is Linche. So this is a beautiful powdery vanilla fragrance. First of all I want to give you a bit of a close-up of the bottle. It is absolutely beautiful. The caps on these bottles you guys are so stunning. I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful lid on any perfume bottle. It just looks amazing. Also, these bottles are very, very heavy. I don't know how I'm going to hold them all to do this video, <laughs> to be honest. The caps are extremely heavy. Yeah, so beautiful bottle, beautiful presentation with this particular line as well. The lids are really on there very well. I don't know if that matters to some people, but some people who are really into perfume and they like a cap that snaps on really well, this whole line is like that, whereas Deluxe, for example, is one that the cap is a little wobbly, but this one you can really, you know, you can pick it up and you're not going to drop your perfume. So this perfume, you guys, is a powdery vanilla. It's a very sensual, feminine perfume. This would be perfect for a date night. I think it's very, has a sensuality to it for sure. It actually has a ton of notes in it. It makes it look very, very complex. So in the opening, you have absinthe, star anise, green tea, grapefruit, orange, bergamot, iris, jasmine, fig, orange blossom, Bulgarian rose, vanilla flower, vanilla bean, heliotrope, ambergris, sandalwood, and musk. And all those notes to say that this is basically a beautiful, creamy, powdery vanilla. If you have ever smelled hypnotic poison, and if you like hypnotic poison, you will love this perfume. This is very, very similar to hypnotic poison. I would say that this smells like a, I would say that this smells like a more expensive, elevated, I don't know, airy version of Hypnotic Poison. There's something in here that's very airy and very, I, I really don't even know how to describe it. With the Tiziana Trenzi perfumes, you guys, the notes are so well blended that you cannot pick out individual notes. It's very, very hard to pick out individual notes. There is the odd exception, but all of those notes together just comes together to make this incredibly sensual, beautiful vanilla perfume and it's gorgeous. I haven't given this a proper wear, so this is very much a first impression of this perfume, um, but the scent itself is gorgeous and of course the bottle is amazing. So I would say that if you're looking for a sensual vanilla perfume, um, something that would be great for a date night, um, this would be a great perfume for that. And I have owned Hypnotic Poison, and I have to say I do prefer this one. There's something about this one that is just so, I don't know, so intoxicating and so inviting. So this is the cap up close. How stunning is that, you guys? I can't even get enough of this. So beautiful. And this is the bottle much lighter. Oh my gosh, this looks like it came down from heaven, doesn't it? It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's a very inviting, sensual, feminine, slightly sweet but not too sweet, um, powdery vanilla perfume and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is my favorite from the whole bunch today. I do have a couple other 
um, kind of close runner-ups. And then I have a couple that I don't think are really my cup of tea, but I will share those with you as we go through. So that is Lynche. So the next one, you guys, I also really, really like, and this is Deluxe from Tiziana Trenzi. And the bottles are slightly different, still very beautiful. I do personally think I prefer the other bottles a little bit more. I'm a little partial to white and gold, but this is a beautiful bottle too. And this perfume, you guys, is definitely, I think, unisex and can be worn by both men or women, whereas I do think the Lynche is very feminine. This one I think is more unisex and I think anybody could wear it. And this perfume is a addictive, very sort of oriental, Middle Eastern smelling um, coffee rose fragrance. What some people might call jammy rose perfume. I don't really like the term jammy because it literally makes me think of jam. <laughs> um, I like to say sweet or honey rose or something like that. The notes that you have in here are coffee, white hyacinth, iris, Turkish rose, vanilla, apopinax, honey, white musk, amber, and cedar. And first of all, I will give you a another close-up of the bottle. The only thing about this bottle, it really likes to attract fingerprints. So if you are somebody who does not like fingerprints, try not to touch this bottle. <laughs> um, but it's a beautiful bottle nonetheless. This is one of those ones that I told you the cap is not on that well. You can see that it's on, but it's kind of wobbly and it definitely you don't want to pick this bottle up by the cap. I mean, as a rule of thumb, don't pick up any of your bottles by the cap, but certainly not this one. How beautiful, how beautiful is this? Again, I don't know, there's something about those Tiziana bottles that just draws me in. They're so gorgeous. And this perfume, you guys, if you are wondering what this smells like, Imagine Montal Intense Cafe or Mansara Roses Vini. If you have ever smelled Intense Cafe or Roses Vini, you will have a very good idea what this perfume smells like. The very first thing I thought when I smelled this was it smells very, very similar to Roses Vini from Mansara. It's hard for me to tell a difference. I think this perfume smells very expensive. I would say that between this one and the Roses Vini, this one might be a little bit less um, sort of heavy cloying. Like for me, I found that the Roses Vini could be a little bit strong. I found, I found it could be a little bit headache inducing almost, where this one I find to have a bit of a softer nature. You know, all the Mansara perfumes have that sort of, um, very specific DNA about them, that sort of strong background sort of note that's just sort of present in most of the Mansara perfumes. This doesn't have that. This perfume would be perfect for a night out, a formal night out. If you were going out on a date or to a formal event or something where you really wanted to stand out and you really wanted to smell expensive, rich, luxurious, sweet, rosy, coffee, this is beautiful. If you like Montal Intense Cafe, if you like Roses Vini, you will like this one as well. They kind of all fit under that same category of that sweet, rosy, vanilla, coffee perfume. And yeah, it's just beautiful. So that is Delox. Also really good lasting power. I haven't given it a proper, proper wear. I've just had it on my skin, but I could smell this pretty strongly all day on my skin. And you guys, this next perfume is truly a wonder. Like this perfume is amazing. This I believe is called Tabit. I have heard some people refer to it as Tabit, but I've looked it up and every source I could find said it was called Tabit. So we're gonna go with Tabit. Um, so this is the elaborate box that comes in. It is huge. It looks like a Christmas present. It looks like something you would give somebody for a gift. Wait till I open it, you guys. It's exquisite. On the top, it does say to Tiziana Terenzi. It has the little sort of emblem on the front and it says look straight to parfum. And when you open it, yes, there is a light in the perfume box. It has its own light, you guys. Have you ever seen anything like that? So the front also comes down and this is what you're left with. Amazing. Like, this is some of the most elaborate packaging I've ever seen in my life, and this is truly like collector worthy. If you're somebody who collects perfumes, I think this is truly collector edition worthy. It has its own display case. <laughs> this perfume literally comes with its own display case. And this is the fragrance inside. So you guys, this is the beautiful Tabit bottle. It is all gold with a white label. Absolutely stunning. I would love to smell more from this particular collection. Um, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful bottle. It has the sort of constellation 
look on the top as well. And this perfume, you guys, if you look at the notes, you are going to get, I think, a very different idea of what this perfume actually smells like. When I looked at the notes, I was expecting this to be a sweet vanilla cotton candy floral perfume. I really was thinking it was going to be a super sweet cotton candy perfume with a little bit of a woody twist. And actually, you guys, if I didn't know any better, I would say that there was oud in this perfume. I totally pick up on oud somewhere. This is a very strong, expensive, rich smelling perfume. If I had to look at my entire collection and think which one smells like money, which one is the most expensive perfume in my entire collection, and I didn't know any different, I would have picked this one. So this perfume opens with green notes and bergamot. In the middle you have peach, floral notes, sand, and coconut. And in the base you have musk, cotton candy, vanilla, woody notes, and amber. And this perfume is described as being a sweet, powdery, musky, floral, fruity, vanilla fragrance. And then kind of the smaller accords are woody, green, caramel, and amber. I actually pick up more on the woody, amber, I guess a little bit caramel, like the woody and ambery accords are the, are the accords that stick out the most to me. And this perfume is strong, you guys. Like if you want a perfume that is going to project and enter a room before you enter the room and you want something that will last you all night and turn heads and everybody will smell you, this is the perfume for you. This is definitely a unisex perfume. Sorry, the bottle is so ridiculously heavy. Um, this is definitely a unisex perfume. And for me, I actually think it leans masculine. I don't know for sure if everybody gets that perception, but for me, it definitely does have a bit more of a masculine leaning feel. And unlike the Deluxe and the Lynche, this one also has what I would refer to as a Tiziana Terenzi DNA. There is something in this perfume very similar to how um, Mancera has that sort of Mancera DNA that you can just kind of tell every time you smell a Mancera perfume, you know it's a Mancera perfume. If you know, you know. This has a Tiziana Terenzi DNA. So there's the cap again. I honestly, I honestly don't even know how to describe this perfume to you. If I was to smell this and not look at the notes, I would think this was a, a subtly sweet oudy fragrance. I could swear there was oud in here. Um, it definitely smells Middle Eastern. It smells masculine to me. It's very strong. It has it does have a bit of a sweetness, but I really don't pick up a whole lot on that sweetness. Um, this perfume is one I'm going to really have to take my time with because it is a monster, monster of a perfume. And it does have a very strong Middle Eastern leaning masculine feel to me. Like I said, looking at the notes, I really thought this was going to be very feminine. I thought it was going to be one of my favorite perfumes of all time. I thought it was going to be an instant love at first sniff. It smells very expensive. It smells very luxurious. I think this would be a great perfume to wear again, sort of a formal occasion perfume, but I also think it would make a great signature scent. I think if you're looking for something that smells like money, this smells like money. This makes you smell like you put on a perfume that cost $800 and people would not be too far off. <laughs> These perfumes are quite pricey, but they're so, I think they're worth it, honestly, because if you look at the presentation, the artistry, the packaging, the thought that goes into it, the performance, how unique it is, there's just so much about this perfume that screams opulence. I think opulent is probably the best word I could use to describe this perfume. Very opulent, subtly sweet, very woody, ambery perfume to me. I think my boyfriend might really like this one. I'm going to ask him. It's really reminding me of, um, it just makes me feel like we're in Dubai or something. It's making me feel like we're in an expensive hotel in Dubai. I don't know. That's kind of the feeling I'm getting from this perfume. So that is Tabit. So now we're going to talk about Draco. I hope I'm saying that properly. If I'm not, please feel free to correct me down below. You guys, I, um, I'm not super familiar with a lot of these names. So this is Draco as I will call it. And this again is described as a powdery, sweet vanilla perfume. This perfume again, you guys smells very expensive to me. It smells very luxurious. It smells very high end. And this one again is unisex. I think all of their perfumes are designed to be unisex, but this one I think does lean a little bit more feminine as compared to the Tibet, which I think, or the Tabit, which I do think leans a little more masculine. And this perfume opens with bergamot, lemon, orange, and green notes, which I definitely get. It does have a little bit of a fresh opening. It has a lot of peach. There's magnolia, jasmine, cedar, and patchouli in the middle. And in the dry down, there's musk, pear, vanilla, tonka bean, and heliotrope. 
So this perfume sounds absolutely gorgeous and you guys, what this kind of reminds me of, not that it smells the same, but it kind of has a bit of a Greenwich Village vibe from Bond 9. If you've ever smelt Bond 9 Greenwich Village and you like that one, this one I think would be also be right up your alley. It immediately gave me those Greenwich Village vibes. Not that they smell the same, but that is what this perfume gave me. It just smells like an expensive, luxurious woman. This is a very, very pretty, expensive, luxurious smelling fragrance and they describe it as a sweet powdery vanilla. I wouldn't describe it as that. I honestly think this is more of a fresh, um, subtly fruity floral vanilla perfume. I definitely do get the vanilla. It's definitely a musky scent. Again, the Tiziana perfumes are so well blended that if I was to smell this, I would never be able to guess what they put in here. I wouldn't be able to guess. I mean, it does smell a little fresh, it does smell a little bit vanilla, it does smell a little bit musky, but I don't think I would have picked out individual notes. They're all just so expertly blended and beautiful perfumes. Again, this Draco does have that underlying Tiziana Terenzi sort of DNA that I pick up in quite a few of them. Um, so it does have a little bit of that Tabit sort of background. It does have a little bit of that Andromeda. They all kind of smell a little similar to one another in a sense. Um, and if you look on Fragrantica, people actually compare this one and Tabit or Tabit to Kirke. They all sort of, they could be sisters basically. Um, so yeah, that is Draco. I really like this one. It's beautiful. If you're looking for an everyday signature scent that makes you smell expensive and luxurious and feminine, Draco is a beautiful one. So we're on our second last one for today's video and I'm going to share with you Cassiopeia. So this is a beautiful, fresh, fruity fragrance. It's actually a passion fruit fragrance. And if you look on Fragrantica, a lot of people will compare this to Britney Spears' Fantasy. Please do not let that sway how you feel about this perfume because to me, I would not have made the distinction. I mean, there is a subtle similarity because obviously Britney Spears Fantasy is a passion fruit fragrance or it's a very fruity fragrance as is this one, but this one smells so much more expensive and elevated. Um, I've actually talked to a couple of people who were turned off from buying this perfume because so many people compared it to Fantasy. Please don't, you know, you have to be very careful. You have to kind of read people's reviews on Fragrantica with a grain of salt. Yes, it has a similarity, but it in no way smells like a celebrity perfume. It has a very expensive quality to it. So yeah, this is Cassiopeia. This is what the box looks like. I wanted to show you the packaging, you guys, because I think the packaging, again, with Tiziana Trenzi is half of the beauty of the, of the perfumes. And they all come in this little box, this little display, and they actually all have a couple of cards with them. I didn't include them in today's video because it would have just been very cumbersome, but they all have these little information cards that tell you a little bit about the perfume and the notes and the inspiration and that kind of thing. So absolutely gorgeous. They also all come with a little cap so that if you want to travel with your bottle, you can replace the big chunky cap and you can just put a little, little cap on for purposes of traveling. And the notes that you have in here are passion fruit, cassis, lemon, fern, carnation, tea rose, lily of the valley, tonka bean, musk, and sandalwood. What this is to me is a fresh, um, little bit floral, fruity fragrance with a musky dry down. A really uplifting, bubbly, happy, bright, everyday summer perfume. That's what this is to me. It's something I would definitely wear just on like an everyday summertime day basis. I think very mass pleasing, um, fruity fragrance. So that passion fruit is definitely your most prominent note. Um, I get a lot of passion fruit. If I spray this perfume, I can smell that passion fruit pretty much the whole day, which is actually really nice because a lot of the times you get a beautiful fruity summer perfume and that kind of fresh fruity opening doesn't last, you end up with just a basic kind of a musky dry down that is a little boring or you just kind of wish that the opening would have hung around longer. I think that speaks to the quality of this brand is that you get that passion fruit fruitiness the whole day. So you're gonna smell sweet and fruity and I think this is a great summer perfume. This is again, of course, a unisex fragrance but I do think it leans um, feminine. Yeah, so that one is beautiful as well. Has really good performance as well for a fruity fragrance. So that is Cassiopeia. 
And the last one that we'll talk about today is Andromeda. This one, you guys, I have to say, I will be totally honest, is not my cup of tea. This is the one that I like the least out of all of the ones that are sitting here in front of me. That's not to say that it is not a good perfume. I think a lot of people love this. Uh, I think it actually gets rave reviews, but for some reason, there's something in it that bothers me that I just don't care for. And I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So the notes that you have in here are Ylang Ylang, Water Jasmine, Bergamot, and Grass. You also have peach, pear blossom, lily, heliotrope, violet leaf, and damask rose. And in the base, you have cashmere wood, ebony, coconut, tonka bean, amber, vanilla, and sugar. So what I get from this, you guys, it reminds me a lot a lot, a lot for some reason of My Burberry and My Burberry Black. If you like the My Burberry fragrances, I think you will love this. There's something, if you guys watch my channel, you know that I used to have both of those perfumes and I had to let them go. This perfume is beautiful, it's elegant, it's feminine. It does, it is unisex, I think anybody could wear it, but I think it does lean feminine. There's quite a heavy dose of peach and there's also a heavy dose of that ebony and cashmere wood and that amber. So I think it's that sort of peachy, woody um, combination that is really reminding me of the My Burberry and My Burberry Black and I think that's why I cannot do this perfume. So I'm just going to take the lid off again here. So here is the stunning bottle and I really wish that I loved this perfume because I had, I heard such rave reviews about it and this was one of the ones I thought would be a shoe in like I thought for sure I would really, really like this one and I have had this on my skin as well hoping that maybe it would change a little bit and to be honest, I just, I just really do not care for this perfume. I can't really see myself reaching for this one. I think a lot of people would really love it though but if you like those very sort of fruity, white floral, woody fragrances, and you're a fan of peach, I think you have to be a fan of peach to like this perfume, then I think you might really like it. It's like an everyday, um, classy, sophisticated, signature scent, everyday perfume, not particularly sexy. Um, I think you could wear this for all occasions. I think it would be especially good for warmer climates or for the summertime. If you live somewhere like I do up here in Canada, I would definitely classify this as a summer perfume. This is not my favorite perfume. I'll be perfectly honest with you guys as always, um, but I think a lot of people would really love it. So that is Andromeda. So you guys, that is it for my Tiziana Terenzi perfumes again today. Thank you so much to So Avant Garde for sending me these beautiful perfumes. It was such a beautiful experience to be able to try Tiziana Terenzi finally for the first time. And I do want to quickly give you a little recap. And my favorite one, as mentioned, is the Linche. Beautiful, powdery, sensual vanilla, something about it very special, very unique, even though it does kind of fit a very familiar scent profile. There's still something about it that's very um, unique and beautiful. Tabit is probably, again, one of the most expensive, luxurious smelling perfumes I've ever smelled in my life. And if you're looking for pure luxury, I think you can look no further. This is definitely one of the most high-end perfumes I've ever experienced in my entire life. Really beautiful. Um, and then we have a beautiful kind of a fruity summer perfume, Cassiopeia. We have your Deluxe, which is great for date nights, formal occasions, super um, kind of sultry and sweet honeyed rose with some coffee. Really beautiful perfume. Draco, again, beautiful, would make a great signature scent. Um, I think really good for women. I think it smells very luxurious. And then we have my Andromeda, which as I mentioned is my least favorite. Something about that sort of peachy, ebony wood accord that just does not sit well with my nose. So those are the perfumes and I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts about them today. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes. Thank you again so much to So Avant Garde for partnering with me in today's video. And again, don't forget that you can save 15% on their website using my discount code MARIE15. And I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.